What's up, guys? Sorry about breathing a little heavy and probably being a little sweaty, but I'm trying to use time management better and I have videos that I got to make. So let's jump into it. I've been seeing a lot of material and information come out about Mike Tyson. Now, if you looked at my last video, you saw that I focused on how Jake Paul is running his business. But just because Mike Tyson did business with him doesn't make Mike Tyson obviously the same kind of person that Jake Paul is exactly. And it doesn't mean that he is forcing these decisions on anybody else. I feel like Mike Tyson more accepts offers and proposals rather than coming up with the plot. We have a few things to go over. So the co-founder of Jake Paul's boxing promotion company went on Fox News and defended saying it's not rigged. This was a sanctioned fight. Bets were being placed and that it would be illegal for them to do that. So I think people are throwing around the word rigged a lot right now, but I never used the word rigged. I just called it Jake Paul's illusion because he makes us see something. He's going by the rules, but he makes us see what he wants us to see. He's like a magician. But this video is not about Jake Paul. It's about Mike Tyson and his place in all this. I was looking at that Fox News article. The guy's name is Nakisa Bidarian, and he's the co-founder of the Most Valuable Promotions, and he's partners with Jake Paul. But I'm going to tell you what I think really happened on Mike Tyson's side, not Jake Paul's side. Here's Mike Tyson admitting that he was hurt before he came in. You're dealing with an injury going into the fight. Yeah, but I can't use that for excuses. If I did, I wouldn't be in here. We also know he came in just a few months beforehand having an ulcer, which I had, and I lost almost half the blood in my body and almost died. And I got to tell you, it took, man, probably about six months to start feeling normal again. I felt weak. My stamina was low. These are all things that are going to affect a boxer big time. So he wasn't at 100%. He probably wasn't even at 70%. And there was a lot of money that was put into this. And remember, the fight had already been canceled once. And this uh, co-founder of MVP also pointed out in their defense, why would we postpone the fight when Mike Tyson had the sciatica and wait for him to be at 100% if we were just going to throw a fight? The whole statement was very disingenuous to begin with. We're not going to pay attention. Mike Tyson was in a wheelchair. What's he going to do, wheel out there? No, he had to postpone it because he couldn't walk, which is perfect for Jake's business plan because Jake wants to pick off the sick ones. MMA flicks and kill breaking news. Jake Paul has officially announced his next opponent, and it's a stunner. Hector Salamanca from Breaking Bad. That's right, the cartel enforcer is trading his wheelchair for boxing gloves. The big question, will Jake ring Hector's bell, or will Hector ring Jake's? Either way, this matchup is sure to be, well, something. Stay tuned for updates on MMA flicks and chill. Back to you, Chris. He's going to become a billionaire because of it. Genius but not a very noble thing to do. He's basically making money off of having Mike Tyson and all these other retired fighters disrespect themselves. I said it in my last video. I'm going to say it again. Jake Paul is in his prime, but he's not challenging himself against opponents who are also in their prime. He's picking off the sick ones. They got to be old. They got to have lots of wear and tear. They got to be on their way out. They got to be hurt. And then on top of that, he's going to put in weird things in his contracts to bend it to his advantage. It's just, it is what it is. And you know what? I had some comments and under my last video that were actually true that I'm going to bring up in this video. I had a commenter mention that all boxers pretty much fight cans because they're cans. <laughs> they fight cans because they're cans. Basically, they fight people lower on the totem pole because they're still lower on the totem pole. But Jake Paul is still doing that. He's just doing it with more attention and more eyes because the people he's fighting are well-known. Now, although that is a good point, the cans fighting each other the same age and have the opportunity to put in 
as much work as they're willing to do in their prime. So there is that. Here's something else to think about. And I'm actually going to just share this with you. This is on the Fox News website. Jake Paul says, I don't care what people have to say. They're always going to have something to say. It is what it is, Paul told Fox News Digital after the fight. So I pointed this out in my last video as well. Jake Paul using the art of war. And one of the phrases that comes to mind, one of the quotes from the book from Sun Tzu is every battle is won before it is fought. And I love this one. I'm going to give you one more. To win 100 victories in 100 battles is not the supreme of excellence. To subdue the enemy without fighting is the supreme of excellence. And I ask you, how could Jake Paul win a fight without entering? Well, you'll always win a fight where you come up with the rules, right? If your opponent can only kick, you put in your contract no kicks. If your opponent is really good at wrestling, you put in your contract no wrestling. If your opponent is a 58-year-old beast warrior and you put in your contract no knockouts, well, you're probably going to win those fights, right? And that is the Jake Paul illusion. So let's get back to Mike Tyson. It's possible that it wasn't a work. I'm not going to use the word rigged because it was a sanctioned fight and money talks. And when we're talking about millions and millions of do dollars, if Diddy can bribe a judge, I'm pretty sure MVP can bribe some city officials. I'm not alleging that. I'm just saying it could happen. After giving it some more thought, looking at the whole situation, the big picture, you have Mike Tyson who had sciatica and had to postpone the fight because he was in a wheelchair, but they still wanted to scoop up that bag of money, right? They still wanted to move forward with the plan because it's a good plan. They already had all the pieces in place. And when you already have all the pieces in place and everybody wants to do it, you keep the plan, especially when it's going to make money. So yes, he had sciatica. So I'm sure Mike Tyson was like, I, I'm not feeling like I can get out there and bounce around one thing. I can't just be bouncing around in the ring. I got to wait for the, thi the sciatica flare up to stop. And uh, Jake was like, all right, well, I still want to do this too. So um, I'll, I'll just go ahead and fight Mike Perry. We'll still make the bag of money no matter what. And Mike Tyson was like, that's cool. And so Mike Tyson's sciatica flare up goes away. He can start walking again. And then he's like, all right, boy, this time to start doing some promoting. Jake Paul's like, so what we're going to do is we want like old school Mike Tyson reels, just real short Mike Tyson cuts, just like we saw. Right. And then Mike Tyson's like, I can give you that. No problem. There's no way this could have happened without there being a conversation that we weren't included on. You know what I mean? We were shown what they wanted to show us because that's how promotion and marketing goes. You show what you want to show. If you're selling a product, you're not going to show all the crummy parts. You're not going to show all the times the product is not working. You only show it at its best, right? So fights are no different. The fight business is no different. You show them at their best. And that way us fight fans were like, oh, Mike Tyson's back. He looks good. Imagine all the footage we didn't see. Those were clips from the best. They were the best. And so when we saw it unedited live, it didn't look the same as the clips, right? So we were like, this looks rigged. Does this look rigged? It looks rigged, right? But here's another theory. Maybe it wasn't rigged. Maybe there was a conversation that was had aside from the contract. Because the only thing you can show in court and prove is what's in the contract. And if both sides are like, we're making money, I'm making money, you're making money. We're good, right? We're good. We're not going to hurt each other too bad. We're just going to go in there and make it look real. That's not rigged. It's disingenuous. It's a money grab. And that's what we saw, right? Let's just say it was real. We know it wasn't, but let's just say it was. Here's a defense. Maybe it was real. Maybe it was sanctioned. Maybe everything was what they were showing us. Maybe we didn't get rope doped Maybe we didn't get bait and switched. Maybe Jake Paul fell for all the edits 
and seeing the best of the clips and was like, oh man, I better start training as hard as I can. I know what I'm up against. And, and Mike don't look like he's playing. This is assuming they're not friends and don't talk all the time, which we know they do because they are friends. They do all the same podcasts together. They run in the same circles. They're all making money together. They're business partners, right? And also in the promotion, they had to go into a studio. Come on. I, I hate to be the guy to tell you that Santa Claus isn't real, but here is the evidence. I'll tell you this. The promoters want confrontation. That's what they want to show people. It's the same as wrestling. That you, nobody wants to see fighters getting along. How annoying is it when we see that in the UFC, when both fighters are so respectful, they're just like loving each other. It feels good a little bit, but it, it doesn't build the tension. We're like, we're like, oh, I want to see this happen. You know what I mean? Imagine if Dustin Poirier and Wonder Boy Thompson fought, how that press conference would be. Both good old boys, really respectful don't talk crap. That's boring, right? So they're not going to show us that. But let, let's go back to the promotion. Actually, let's go ahead and watch the scene right now. In order to film that, you have Mike Tyson and Jake Paul showing up in a ring to film this, right? There's some cameras there. There's a camera crew. There's Jake Paul's people. There's Mike Tyson's people. And they meet up. You think for a second they're not like, hey, man, shaking hands and hugging each other. And how's the family? How's everything going? They both have already admitted they care about each other's family and they're good friends. There is no way you can love somebody and want to take their head off in a real fight and really try to harm them. There's just not, not unless you're a psychopath. And as much as we want to say, well, Tyson and Jake Paul are psychopaths. No, they're not. Mike Tyson's showed us some savagery back in the day when we saw him get interviewed because he's authentic and he can't help it. But if there's anything we know about Mike Tyson is that he, he is a very sensitive person in touch with his feelings and he does have a sense of moral and a code that he follows, right? And Jake Paul, he's a doofus, but here's the thing. He doesn't care because he's getting paid. He doesn't care what we think. And honestly, at this point, he probably really doesn't care if he wins or loses because he's getting paid. And the journey is where he's making the money. They throw words around like legacy, but Jake Paul's legacy won't be being an amazing fighter. It'll be being a, an amazing businessman and promoter. There will be people writing books on how to manipulate the masses on Jake Paul's career. He is an actor that knows how to box. That's what he is. And he knows how to box good enough to get out there and write a contract and find the right opponents to have a really good chance of winning. We saw what happens when he fights a real boxer. And if he's fighting in his own promotion, actually at this point he has so much money, any promotion he's fighting in, we can't trust now. We can't trust that he didn't hand a people a stack of cash to bend it in his favor. Can we? Like I said, I, it sucks being the guy that tells you Santa Claus isn't real, but here we are. <laughs> There's a saying that behind every good lie is, a, is enough truth to sell it. That's what Jake Paul's doing. If Jake Paul is making hamburgers, he would be advertising it as 100% all pure beef but he would have soy products that he's mixing in there just a little bit to make the patties a little fatter and not have to buy so much meat. That's how his career is. He's the soy, Mike Tyson's the beef. Mike Tyson and all the actual legitimate fighters that Jake Paul has fought is the beef. And Jake Paul is the soy product being mixed in with the beef until you don't know what's what. You just have this patty that looks like a beef patty, but there is beef in it. It's been tested. There's beef in this. We tested it for beef. It's in there. You know what I mean? It's like if you have a gallon of water and you put one shake of salt in there, you're not going to taste the difference in the water. You're not going to taste the salt in the water. And that's Jake's career. He's, he's creating an illusion. And Mike made a fortune off of being in Jake Paul's 
business plans. And again, Jake Paul, he wants to be world champion. That's the pitch. And he's manifesting it through money, weird contracts, burnt out fighters, old fighters, injured fighters. And Mike made a fortune off of being part of that. Now you have everybody wanting to fight Jake Paul. You got Ryan Garcia calling him out. And also other older boxers are starting to see, dang, Mike Tyson just made a grip of money. He just made a fortune. I think they said he made 20 million and Jake made 40 million. But now you have older fighters like Evander Holyfield, like, hey, we could do a trilogy. I can make a fat stack of cash too. Because these older fighters, they're, you know, 60s, right? They're at the end of their life. You know, like 20, 30 more years to go. Let's be realistic. These fighters now are thinking about generational wealth. And they're like, if, man, I could get in the ring one more time, it'll be a good reason to get in shape, get back in the gym, get some attention. It'll feel good. It'll be exciting for my family. And it'll be a bunch of money for my family when I'm gone. I mean, I would rather see Vander Holyfield and Mike Tyson fight rather than Mike Tyson and Jake Paul. Okay, I'm 46 years old. I think completely different than I did when I was 26 years old or 16 years old or 36 years old, right? So you mature in your mind and you start seeing the world different. Let's use Mike Tyson for an example. When he was 16, 26, in his prime, he was the savage. He was coming from a very poor upbringing, And he was manipulated by people. He was beat up. He was bullied. And he was basically a cornered, injured animal because he hadn't lived a life where people actually cared for him yet. Not really. Cuss Cuss was the closest one, but even Cuss had an agenda as well, you know? And once you experience love in the world, it changes you. Once you genuinely start seeing the world for how it is and how hard it is, and you see people that you care about and love struggling and going through it, and maybe even you're struggling and going through it too, you start looking at the world a little different as you get older. You start looking at it more maturely. And I'll tell you what, the older you get, the less you want to hurt people and the more you want to put out good, at least if you're a decent person, I think, you know? And I feel that from Mike Tyson when he speaks. I can't get through a whole impulsive podcast, but I watched part of one with Mike Tyson on it. And Logan Paul was just asking the dumbest questions. And Mike Tyson, of course, was answering it honestly. And he was saying things like, I'm not the same person I was back then. And we actually saw that in the ring. We saw a loving person. But here's what I'm getting at. When you get older, you don't want to hurt people. So these older guys, when they get in the ring, even if they can hurt each other, even if they can lay somebody out and cause nasty damage, which it would be a lot nastier now than when they were 20, right? If you're getting punched in the head hard, like in a fight at the age of 65, that's a lot more devastating than when you're in your prime in your 20s. And Mike Tyson is aware of that. Hollyfield is aware of that. And if they fight, they're both going to be aware of that. And they're not going to want to hurt each other. All their beef and all the tension that was created over their fights years ago is gone. That's not a thing anymore. They don't have adversity anymore. So if we see that fight and we see them having adversity, just know it's all show. It's all PR. It's all public relations. It's all shaping perspective and opinion of the public. That's all it is. Again, I hate being the guy to tell you that Santa Claus isn't real and that pro wrestling's not real and it's scripted, but here we are. If you like the content, if you like the video, subscribe, like, share. Tell me what you think. Chill. Thank you for kicking in with MMA Flex and Chill. Chill. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Ring the bell, ring the bell.